Okay, I am going to call this meeting to order. This is the reuse committee meeting, and it, today is July 12th? 13th. 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 July 13th, 2017. It's a palindrome. And it, that's right. Ah. It is a palindrome. I think oh, one of the last of the week. This week. This week's a palindrome. Yeah, there's been a lot of them, right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So the first <laughs> item on the agenda is to approve the minutes like from May, and I cannot tell a lie, I usually have copies of the minutes available for people, and I forgot to do that. But then we technically... You, you've seen them for two months in a row. Right, and right. But we also approved them last time, it's just that we didn't have a quorum. I don't know that we, were you there? Did mm -hmm. we, did we approve, did we say, yeah? I don't think we had any problems yeah, with but, but I don't think we quorum. can approve them. Yeah, we can't approve we them. We couldn't today. approve them. Yeah, right. right. And you did <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There were no yeah. problems there identified. Were no problems. Okay. Other than to approve of them generically. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so did, uh, does anyone, has everyone seen the minutes? And... And I second. Okay. There was a, there was a motion to approve? Yes. yes, okay. Uh -huh. And we have a second. Yeah. All, all, all in favor? Second. All opposed? That's the easier way to do it is just say, is there anyone opposed? Okay, they've been accepted. Thank you, everybody. And recenter update, Mac, could you? Okay, sure. Um, <clears throat> I believe last weekend we set a new record. Um, we had wow. 75 people <gasps> that oh, were wow. taking stuff Great. last weekend. Um, so. Wow. The numbers continue to increase. Um, I think, you know, hearing Donna talk about another location closer to town is both exciting and scary. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. When you see the increasing I numbers know, out right. there, because it would be even much greater if it was yeah. closer to town. But anyway, yeah. that's another conversation. Right. Um, yesterday, we had two visits. We had a visit from Eco Buildings Bargain, and they oh. took about 450 pounds worth of stuff, including. Mm -hmm doors, vanities, sinks, and oh, great. Uh, some other things. So that That's opened up some, some space in the in the annex, which will be quickly filled, I'm sure. But it was great to have them get up there. Um, what town are they out of? Uh, West, West Springfield. West Springfield. West yeah, Springfield. Thanks. And I think Diana had arranged with them uh, to come up. Um, we also had a visit from Salvation Army again, which is, they again, once again, they showed up at 8.30 in the morning. Um, they had just been there last week, right. and they're just all over the map in terms of, you know, you can't really make a plan for them other than to be ready for them, I said to Susan. So our, we've sort of shifted to trying to get ready for them whenever they show up and have boxes of stuff we can just give them that we've pre-weighed or will weigh on the spur of the moment. But they, so they, they took some stuff too, but it's a, it would be nice, and we're supposed to meet with Jared at some point, and, and, uh, it would be nice if we can get them back on the routine that we had last year, which is that they would show up the third Wednesday, and I told them, you know, between nine and eleven or something like that. But they, there's a there's a lot of stuff going on at the Salvation Army and people changing roles and stuff. So, yeah. what it is, what it is. Um, <coughs> Dennis and Diane have done some repairs for us out there. We had a problem with the door that Dennis fixed last week. And Diana did some furniture repair. We had a piece of furniture that had been there for a long time, and she repaired it Saturday, and it went immediately as soon as she repaired it. What, what piece of furniture? It was, was a that? children's toy toy storage box, basically that had the bottom and needed oh, to be replaced. Right. Um, I, I see in the email that our tarp has arrived, and um, I think Peter is going to be the one that's going to take the lead on setting the tarp up on the side, which will be good to keep that outdoor stuff out of the sun a little bit and the rain. Um, yeah, the Wednesday crew has been coming consistently and tidying the place up. Uh, we, I don't, it would be so difficult to be ready for Saturday if they didn't do that. Uh, it's really wonderful what gets done on Wednesday. Um, and the, let's see, I'm going to be gone. I'm going to be there this coming Saturday, but then gone for three Saturdays. So just a heads up to other folks who might be available there, you know, to check out the, uh, the list of who's coming and volunteering and so forth. Um, so yeah, that's, that's all I can think of right off the top of my head. Um, 
I just wanted to add that um, you, you hit the tarp and we already discussed the roof, although that uh, isn't in the minutes. So I'm going to do a little summary of what Donna just said. And that is that they have had a contractor out there for to, um, to take a look at the roof and they're asking for two different bids. One would be just to fix part of the roof and one would be to put essentially a whole new roof um, on the shed. And they're looking at, once they get that cost, they're going to look at, um, you know, is it, is, it, is it economically feasible given the state of the structure and what other options are there? Um, and kind of taking a look at, it's kind of a spider web and that there are other issues that are affected if we can't be out there, where would we go? And all that kind of stuff would, would follow. But it's, it definitely is being addressed. Um, it, they are all aware. Donna has carefully read our annual report, and she knows what's going on. And we've had continuing conversations. So the other thing that I wanted to mention, because I don't know if all of you know, is that Don, Diana had made a proposal to <coughs> Donna uh, uh, offering to get up there and fix the roof herself because she she feels uh, she that, that she feels part of the problem she, she feels she's identified uh, the problem and she thinks that it would be very simple to fix um, and so if she made a very very generous offer that if the city paid for materials that she would do the work and that as you heard from Donna is not going to be feasible but it's an incredibly generous and amazing offer. So I wanted you guys to all be all be aware of it because um, Diana is a real amazing <laughs> person. <laughs> we all are amazing in different ways, that, and that's one of the ways that Diana is, is amazing. So uh, the other thing that I wanted to mention is that we are still playing with having lines painted. I don't know. Those of you who've been out there, I don't know if you feel that the cones have been helping to curb people speeding through or annoying the gatekeepers. Um, what What is your thought about that? The, the cones on the yeah. approach to yeah, on, the, on approach. the approach to the to the uh, gatekeeper right. shed. Is that is that helping to I think calm traffic? I think they, they I'm pretty sure they're ha pretty happy with, okay. with what's going okay. on. Okay. So the the plan at this point, and I and um. Deb is looking at it, and this is something that I developed with uh, Tom and Marsha, is that the approach, um, here's the gate here. So the, as, as you approach, um, this is like the crest of the hill here, and then there's the, um, the scale is like here, we'll say. And what we do is we have double lines to the point where traffic is exiting. So like we have recenter traffic that's exiting this way. So we would have double lines to there and then there'd be a break and then there would be um, probably dashed lines and we'd create like if this is the gatekeeper's hut, we would create uh, and then there'd be a stop here and there would be actually a stop sign that would uh, be um, that could be movable for this winter times for plowing. And then there's going to be a stop sign here for this for this traffic so so that cars would come down this way and they would um, they would either go here and stop or they could go here and stop what that creates is a, a kind of a two-lane thing for the gatekeepers so that when things are busy each gatekeeper, you know, or if somebody's sell, having to sell a, t a sticker and it takes a little longer, that, that people would still be able to, you know, go where they need to go and mm. two gatekeepers could kind of assist in front of the gatekeeper's hut. So that's, that's the plan right now. And then, so then, of course, exiting traffic would go out this way on the other side. Right now, there's just nothing there and it's just kind of a free for all, which works when it's not very busy, but when it is busy, it causes problems. So that's being, um, the, the new thing is being looked at by Deb and then we'll just run it past um, David Galetta. I, don't, I think he's aware of what we had planned, um, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem and the streets. So 
go ahead. No, the, and that. the sign paint, the, the street, the, the line painting guy ha is aware that we're wanting something to happen also. So the, the stuff, the, the, the blue lines, except for the buildings and the traffic flow, the, the blue lines would be what would be painted. What were you going to say, Barbara? Well, just mean, right now, the um, exit is be isn't it? We go out behind the we go out behind the gate, don't we? Right. The yeah, exit right now is we go out behind and we kind of kind of cross over. Right. So they're going to have okay. so 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 we're over here. The recenter's over here, right. and our our traffic goes way exit around. goes goes around the gatekeeper's right. hut and out this way. And so then they have to there's going to be stop sign here, and then they they will continue this way. Okay, so that other red line, that's not us. Exit. So we'll still be exiting around the gatekeepers. Yes. Okay. So this is that, yeah, this is actually us. This is our traffic okay. here. Yeah, and the other one would be more for people using the dumpsters. And okay, stuff. Right. I get it. Okay. Right, I and I mean, some of these people, some mm -hmm. of these red people are our people coming in, but, um, yeah. I think we have good signs, exit signs. Right, the other thing that I'm going to do is create some kind of a sign that, um, very um, cordially, friendly, in a friendly manner, reminds people that we are guests at this transfer station and that we have to play by their rules and, and that they will need to enter through the gatekeepers and not, <coughs> and not skirt the, gate, the, the transfer station traffic. Um, it just, you know, Marsha, part of the thing is people, um, you know, Marsha, if Marsha or Tom can tell people as they come in, you might have to pay a fee on that, but we'll let them take a look at it. Then when we tell them they have to get pay a fee off on it, it's not a big deal. So it's, right. it, it, it really will help, um, whereas if we're the first person that even mentions to them that they might have to pay a disposal fee, that, that's the right. a recipe for um, angry people. Right. So, um, I, I will create some kind of a sign that says, you know, uh, we love being here and we're, we are guests and please abide by the transfer station rules. So um, I think that was it for the recenter update. Okay. I, um, I had one or one other two little funny things here. Mm -hmm. For anybody that can't get away this summer but's really nostalgic about summer activities, you could have <laughs> oh a toy marshmallow <laughs> which even makes a sizzle sound. That's if you're allergic to marshmallows. Yeah. Oh, that's wow, hilarious. That is, that is And then this is this is the the, uh, the mystery package for people to guess and I'll tell you what it is in uh, this kind of package together. This is a toy? It was to put in, the, in the stocking. A coal in your stocking? No. No. It was carrots. Boy, I wouldn't want my kids to, young kids, to have access to those little. It is coal. Is it not charcoal? charcoal? Is it faux charcoal? It's not real coal. It's fake coal. And a carrot. Yeah, so I mean, it's fake. It's all plastic. Right. And it's oh, plastic. It's a, oh, 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 I know what it is. It's a snowman kit. Oh, oh my God. Oh, very good. Of course. Very good. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't know if it'll stand up. No, I guess it always wow. too wide. Oh, it's the eyes and the noses. Right. right. Roger gets the prize. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Give it to somebody for a, a small snowman. We should take photos of some of these. Oh, yeah. We should take photos. That's cute. I'm going to this afternoon. Well, if we get the Saturday. whole roof, roof you know, changed out there, I think we should have a little museum. <laughs> rotating exhibits. Bring well, this back. I'm going to be out this. I'm going to this will, photo Actually, this would be great at the toy exchange. A museum would be great because. Um, if you guess it, you can have. That's uh, right. Yeah. I don't know if you guys remember, but when we went to Gold Circuit e cycling, he has a little museum of old computers and mm -hmm. stuff that yeah. have come through. And right. it was a lot of fun to see. There's a, there's a store in, in Greenfield, a re uh, computer repair shop that has mm -hmm. all kinds of old computers sitting in there. Yeah. And their display windows. Yeah. It's kind of scary that, that they aren't necessarily that old. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Oh. Anyway, um, I did want to tell you about our meeting. I met with David and Peter about the volunteer incentive proposal. And we all agreed that John Celentano's concept of 
rewarding people for signing up in advance and then showing up as they've promised um, would net them a recenter sticker for the following season. So mm -hmm. if, if, if you sign up a week in advance to work and you show up for that session, then you will get a free recenter sticker for the, the next year. Just just the one time? You only have to or do that Or even this year. I mean, if you do it early and, you know, but then how are you going to be getting in if you don't have a recenter sticker? But, yeah. So just once. All you got to do is sign up in advance Three once? Times. Three times. Okay. Three times. Okay. I'm sorry. I, was, I wasn't clear on that. Yeah. So I wanted the, the group to talk about that a little bit and see if you were comfortable with that and uh, <coughs> we can vote on it and then I would just run it past Donna and make sure that it's cool with Donna. Are there many volunteers who need a sticker? I mean, like you know, Northampton residents, a lot of us just yeah, get the I transfer think, station sticker anyway. Yeah, oh, I think that you were, you were out when we had these conversations. Yeah. Um, okay. Peter, in, in particular, mm -hmm. has not, um, doesn't have a sticker and I'm sure there are some and and people from uh, out of town Andrea, Andrea right. is from out of town Andrea has purchased a sticker mm -hmm. um, and Peter said that when he was the one that proposed that we have a sticker for people out of out of town mm -hmm. that can't buy a, a transfer station sticker and he said it was never his intention when he made that proposal for volunteers to have to buy one. And, and so we've been kind of struggling a, a, around mm, this okay. issue because some people feel that there is enough incentive already to come and volunteer. And then some people, f or and some people feel like you shouldn't have to have incentive to volunteer. Um, and then some people feel you do. So, so this was a, not a compromise, but this was something that that solves resolves the issue. Yeah. Okay. Or at least we thought it did. So mm -hmm. does this mean though when they come to when they come mm -hmm. to do the volunteer work, can they get in? Because if it's going to be well, three that's times, the thing. It would be for next year. Oh, for next year. Yeah. Yeah. yeah because that. that yeah. Because it would be. Um, that right. kind of. I think that that takes away a lot of the. Well, they can't get in. I mean, so so then go back to the rules 22. of the transfer right. station because yeah. Yeah. because you know you know the thing is, what is the road you know offhand the um, population of Northampton? What is it? Twenty eight to thirty thousand. Okay, so oh, we have thirty thousand people that live in Northampton that that um, and then we have about four thousand of them that four thousand households that buy transfer station stickers. So we've got 4,000 people that have have access now. There are um, others that can get free access that perhaps don't, but they could through the means-based discount. Um, and then we have the $10 per season option for those who don't want a sticker or don't live here. So it's really, um, you know, it's, it's, it's an, it's intended for Northampton residents. If you're not a Northampton resident, you're welcome, and we have an avenue for people to do that. Yeah. It's it's just the volunteer situation that, you know. But that's I mean this is where I think we're more. Let's look at it from that point. We're mm -hmm. trying to get the volunteers in. Mm -hmm. um, but this this doesn't seem to happen to go for next year. I mean maybe people would perceive it perceive it as a good deal. Mm -hmm. I don't think it seems confusing. Okay, this is something else. It's uh -huh. hard because there's um this includes people who are out of town. But what if like for in town people, mm -hmm. they could get ten dollars toward their transfer station sticker for next year? Is it a similar pot? Um, that to me that would yeah. Be, well, that's an interesting. That question. would be a real. That would be a real incentive. And then you're looking at next. year. You can look at next year whether it's one, two, or three times you volunteer. Now, the, the out-of-town people, um, it would be different. Well, it's, it's not just volunteer. It's vo it's sign it's up, up in advance and show yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. So, but I don't know if that's getting too complex. But yeah, I mean, it, it is complicating it. But you're right. Um, if somebody already, we're trying is to tap on the people who the 
four thousand people right. plus from here. So it's more of an incentive for the four thousand people. So if you if, if you get a free recenter sticker, could you get a discount on the right? Yeah, because that's otherwise be a little bit harder, but I it, it, it does make sense mm, in a way. It does. Yeah. 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 Otherwise, we're not we're looking at the people who are already coming to the transfer station. Pretty mm -hmm. much, we want to reach out and get people who don't come, but are do we? I mean, who who, who are coming to the. Um, what do we call it? The uh, recenter. Mm -hmm. uh, who have the recenter in their head already? We want to get more of the people who come from the tran who might do the transfer station. I mean that we already have them here. Right. Right. So right. So you want to incentivize the people? Yeah. 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 To no, enlarge no, the number point. of people who come. That's a good yeah. point. Well, so what do you guys think about that? I think it's a great program. You know it. Uh, as as amended by Barbara, or sure, or but it doesn't even, it doesn't have to have that. I mean, for drawing on four thousand households is not the same as drawing on the rest of the ten thousand, fifteen thousand households that are around, mm -hmm. and then plus the surrounding communities. So if we can get people from surrounding communities or Northampton to mm -hmm. become recenter volunteers, and the staffing is the problem in, in ahead of time, that gives them a little bit of incentive, mm -hmm. and it may be for next year, but once we get going, then it continues to roll. So you think that even without Barbara's amendment, that that this is a good idea? Oh yeah, it's fantastic. Okay. It's great. Any other thoughts from others? Yeah, I think, it's, uh, yeah, I think it sounds good, and I think the amendment sounds great too. So, so the question is, does this group want to? I, I, what I would like today is to have a vote to to see what you know what we would like to propose to Donna for the situation. <coughs> So do we want to propose that that people after three advance commitments and showing up would get a free recenter pass for the next year and those who buy permits would get ten dollars off? Is that what we would like to propose to Donna? Um, do we have consensus on that? Actually? Another thing, though, another thing we get volunteers to come. Someone's going to have to. We have to get organized. Well, show them what to do. Have like a little mini training. Right. Well, I will. I'll take care of it. That's something mm -hmm. separate. And the other and thing is, yeah. If we're doing it this that. one, why three? Maybe two. Would two make it? No, I think mm -hmm. three. You need three. Okay. I'm just. I mean, you don't have to pay. I don't. You, you know. If you work someplace, you don't usually have to pay for parking. You guys. Yeah. What's important for you guys to know is that. We have, we have untapped resources that are in the process of getting tapped for, for, for recruiting more volunteers. We are not in dire straits, and and so where we have to start, you know, you know, worrying down I'm, the line. I'm not, I'm not worried because um, Dennis has turned out, has worked out really well. We can probably get two people from the tax incentive pro tax work off program next year. You know, there's there's other and and we I was in touch with the RSVP program through the um, Hampshire Cog, and they're going to be putting some stuff out. So I don't feel like we are at a crisis point. And at we all. can be experimental. Absolutely. So I I don't want to, you know, um, yeah. I, I we we need to tap the resources that we have available to us before we start worrying, and and feeling like we have oh my God we have to attract people. I don't think we're there yet. We could do it as a time trial, do it for like a two or three year period and see how it's working. Because I, I can't imagine that many volunteers are going to be that responsible enough to do this program. If they haven't already mm -hmm. voluntarily done it, then $10 off, it's a nice gesture, but it, it requires a lot of personal planning to okay. go ahead and, and responsibility to sign up and show up yeah, right. and three times. So I don't think, I don't know that we're going to get a whole lot of people doing it. So if we can track it for two or three years, if sure. it's three or four people, then no big deal. If it's right. all of a sudden we've got a lot of people volunteering, 10 or 15, that's that's a right. lot more money. Right. Well, so... So we could just track it for a couple of years. Does somebody want to make a motion as to what we should present to Donna as our incentive plan? So the, the motion as amended with Barbara's suggestion uh, the three times that mm -hmm. people sign up early and show up, they get a free sticker the next year, a free uh, recenter sticker, or ten dollars off of their regular sticker. And if that's too complicated, because getting a free sticker is one thing, getting ten dollars off, then you have 
that's a complication that may no one want to deal with. Uh -huh. So just bomb. withdraw that if she says, oh no, that's not going to work. But stick with the $10. Okay. Just give it a shot. As, as uh, said Roger that, said, and we'll give it a shot, see what happens. And should we also add that we'll monitor it for a couple of years? As, 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 do it as a trial? Well, or not we're going to monitor it. Yeah, well, either way, we're going to monitor, monitor it. Right? Yeah. Okay. So okay. We can put it on our calendar in two I'm years to, to look at it. <laughs> Okay, so it's been. That doesn't have to be part of the. The proposal. motion has been made and it's been seconded. Any other further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, cool. So, um, so and then drop the ten dollar off if that causes major problems. And that could be a coupon, even something. It could be. Yeah, they can I'll, I'll talk to Deb to see how that might be able to work before I present this to you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Who monitors, who's been keeping track of the people who sign up and show up so far? Well, there's a sign-in sheet that people sure. are supposed to sign in and sign out right. at the recenter when they work. And then, of course, we have the online, the online right. record, too. So, so I've, and those, and someone's been following that, see who matches up, see who's been... Yeah, I would be I would be doing that. And at the end of the season, I usually go through and and look at who's how how many people have worked the most, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, but so. but the signing up in advance part. Well, the I would be I would monitor that, that okay. as well. All right. So, uh, yeah. My question was: Is anybody doing that now? Well, David is the official. Well, uh, no, he's the he he runs the sign up genius, and I've been a I've asked him to add me as an administrator so okay. that I can get on there and run okay. reports and stuff like that as well. So as Donna mentioned, we've been talking about my role and and expanding my role. And one of the things that it's clear to me, I mean, the the city at this point is not going to be able to find a paid volunteer coordinator for us. It's not going to happen. So. In conversations with Donna, you know, it's clear that my role needs to be more of a volunteer coordinator. I haven't had time to do that, right. um, but if with expanded hours, my role would expand to include that. Cool. Um, and so there would be certain things that I would just be doing. Has she put I that in the now. FY18 budget? And my position? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So. Um, and what would it expand to, hopefully? Potentially expand to. Well, there's only it can only expand so far. <laughs> <laughs> you are right now. You how many hours now? You well, technically I'm 20 hours a week, right. but but during the months of May through I'm sorry March, March through June 16th or so, I pretty much work full time. So it's it's kind of a seasonally busy thing, and then again in the fall when we start having our events, I I work far more than 20 hours a week. So expanding to almost full time or full time is, um, you know, there's there's going to be more time, but I'm also, yeah, I just don't, I want to manage people's expectations because I do a heck of a lot right now in very little time, and well, I so guess I don't know, I'm, I'm not going to be able to double that with. <laughs> I'm speaking more from um, as a as a tax paying member of Northampton. Mm -hmm. That um, what they, I mean, I'm I'm all for getting more hours. So mm -hmm. That's where I was coming from. Right. Just uh, supporting you to get more hours. Right. So right. I, just, I gotta. Right. I have to yeah. leave right at nine thirty. Okay. So I'm wondering if we can okay. move on to. Okay. Um, so the repair discussion review. We already spoke about it um, at the last meeting. I want. I wanted just to give you a quick rundown of um, what happened. I mean, what um, people's discussion about it. Uh, this is essentially from our evaluation. We had people check out, and then I have started collecting responses from the fixers who participated. Yeah, so um, of the outgoing surveys, we had 30 of them. Uh, 23 people said their items were fixed. Four said they were not fixed. Three said they were sort of fixed, which means that they were partially fixed and given instructions, etc. Um, what people liked the most, we had pretty simple outgoing form and we essentially said what, what did you like and what do you think we could approve. So the top thing that people liked was the friendliness of the whole event and they said everyone was so friendly and it was great. Um, about 15 people between, um, said that the whole thing was awesome. 
Um, we had seven thanks. Four people said that they loved the sense of community and the, uh, that it brought. And then uh, three people, we had three responses to helpfulness, three responses to snacks and appreciation, three responses to getting things fixed, and three responses to everything. Oh, and then three responses to please continue. Uh, or three, three was comments. Was this on the exit things? This or was on the, the exit. So this wasn't on the thing you did online? No, not yet. Yeah. So then uh, what we can, oh, yeah, so those were for on the, on the, exit. the on the participant exit forms. Right. What we can improve, this is a list from the participant exit forms combined with information that I've received from the fixers. So oh. this list includes both groups. Um, more electric, electronic fixers. I got one. Um, list specialties in advance so that people know what kinds of things they can bring. A better sign up system and queuing s system. Um, increased advertising better lighting, surge power strips and extension cords available for fixers, and to limit the number of items uh, that people can bring uh -huh. weight again, which is uh, also related to the sign-up system. Uh, how people heard about us, and this is back to only the participants, eight people heard us uh, in the newspaper, six people heard about us on Facebook, six people heard about us from a friend, Six people heard about us from our email that went out to our email list. Uh, two people found out about us on the web. Two from a flyer at Cup and Top Cafe or at um, Cooper's. And then one person, only one person said that they heard about us from the postcard huh. that went out. So, um, yeah, so, but it was a very right. popular event and, and super successful and um, everyone that I have spoken to is just really pleased with it. And David and I are starting to recruit fixers and it sounds like you are too. Yeah, one so more, just moving their community, does electrical stuff. Excellent, yeah. excellent. So I will con convene the organizing group for the event soon and we'll start um, putting our heads together about what, what things will change. I did want to explain, um, so the Department of Environmental Protection is very excited about repair stuff. They're excited about reuse and they're excited about repair. And Brooke Nash, the waste reduction chief at the DEP, gave my name to the, uh, Peter Mo Milley or Mui at um, ifixit.com. Uh, he is from, uh, he is in, he's based in Berkeley, California. And so Brooke told him that we were having this and he contacted me and, and wanted to talk. Um, and it was a really good conversation. It was a little, a uh, little bit of a wet blanket after our amazing success in June. He, um, he spoke about, in his opinion, that he thinks that we need to, people need to move upstream and not just have things fixed, but we need to create informed consumers so they understand what they're buying and how they affect the waste stream, mm -hmm. which makes total sense, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. And he, um, he said we need to help demystify science and technology so that we can make better policy choices and, and changes. <laughs> And um, you know, this was something that we had discussed at the at the organizing meeting. And yeah, there's some pros and cons to it. Um, so he also said that um, f he felt fixing things for free is not the most effective way to help the planet. He said we need to measure success by how we're changing consumer consumption mindsets, or the consumer consumption mindset. Um, and that and that his model focuses on helping you to fix it and that and that people are much more involved and engaged and he wanted to encourage us I mean he didn't come out and say this and I kept saying well and, and what were you hoping for from our conversation he wouldn't say this but he was kind he was wanting to encourage us to move away from the repair cafe model into the more participatory model he said that in his experience, when government organizations sponsor repair cafe models, that it sets weird expectations for people. And you start getting this weird sense of entitlement from people, 
and, and the surly, uh, you know, must wait and angry if it's not fixed kind of attitude. And that when you involve people in the fixing and say, we will help you to fix it, their expectations are a little lower. And they, it's a, it's a whole different kind of mindset. Um, he said, once you set the expectation of free repair, it's hard to whack, walk back on. So this was kind of a, a kind of a, a, a big splash of water <laughs> for me, um, but it was interesting. I mean, I wanted to share it with you guys, and and and, and um, I will share it with the the organizing committee, and we can sure. talk about it more. Um, two other quick things that he said, uh, or that came out, is that the fix it fixers actually become fix it coaches, which is a little bit of a different set of skills. It's a different mm -hmm. skill set. Because some fixers love fixing and they love helping people getting their stuff fixed, but they're not necessarily teachers and they're not necessarily uh, patient with, you know, here, why don't you do this? They're used to doing it themselves. So it's not that there aren't people out there, but right now we're in such a fledgling state where we're, lo we're just wanting fixers. We don't necessarily care if they're good at teaching them. Right. At least that's how I feel. That's that's right. my impression yeah. of where we are right mm -hmm. now in this growth phase. Um, so I don't want to now start saying, well, by the way, you need to start training people to fix stuff. You know, it, it's just it's something that we need to talk about. And since we're running out of time, yeah. we're going to have a discussion about. We yeah. need to have a discussion mm -hmm. with the full right. group and then also with the organizing. Group. Sure, and, and I easily see envision a, a combined event where we have yeah, that's what one I was exactly. one table. Right. Where we have, and we start putting up materials promoting learning how to do stuff, mm -hmm. but to expect right. everybody to be a, a fix it geek is, I think, is over much. Yeah, but I yeah. see that as an ideal. I yeah. mean, it's an, an ideal. ideal. He, I, mean, I think you're in a great he just some, beginning. And the idea very of, good points. And the idea of this is stuff you should avoid buying because it's horrible downstream. Right. Yeah. So just information and that, that we can hand out to people mm -hmm. and start educating people. So so that's so it, it's a it's a it's a and it really works into our mission. Absolutely, absolutely. And more with our library of books that we started, you know. And, right. and for, you just so you know, the, no, he also said um, that he knew the Repair Cafe woman well and that they have had discussions about this and, you know, so it's not like he was trying to poach, you know. Right. Poach Presumably they're working together in Europe. They have a, a lot of combination. Of right. I don't know anything more about it. So he did give me, I'm going to give this to you, Roger, um, and I will forward it to anyone else who's interested. Um, he sent me a list of repair, I'm sorry, fix-it clinics that are going on in California, et cetera. He gave me a list of some places that we could call that have had fix-it clinics. He Cambridge said that their too. model is to do it at libraries, but that it's not necessarily a library event. So it's not a municipally oh. sponsored event. But they that's want it like MIT or someplace like that where they had, he, they do. They had benches, you know, where they could really they have the Actually, stuff. they have fix-it clinics at... at um, in Cambridge. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so the, his, um, I was looking at the bottom of his email and he said, fix it clinics, um, and this is their kind of tagline, celebrating repair through all ages, do it together, hands on, STEM oriented, fix and learn, community, disassembly, and discovery. It's a mouthful. But you can kind of sense what, where he's going. Can you do that once more? I just want to get a little bit. Yeah, um, but what's the feeling? You can, you can, you yeah, thanks. It's number five there. I like that. So idea. I just wanted to um, present those things to you. And, and if anyone wasn't here last we, uh, last month that attended the repair workshop <coughs> and, and have, have that you would like to comment, um, now's your time. Otherwise, we'll, we'll take beginning. it up next next. And next month is only a month before the event. Right. The next one. Right. So we're going to meet before that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. So we are almost officially out of time. I wanted to see how many people have, have can stay just a few more minutes to so we can maybe hit uh, hit a couple other topics. Mm -hmm. um, Roger's leaving. Yeah. It's so we will lose our quorum. I do say we have. I'd love to do it uh, under the compost education mm -hmm. brainstorming. I, I thought for a long time we could do a composting workshop at the Reese Center. Mm -hmm. And we have the composting barrels, but it'd be nice using our, our re used materials, the wood and the doors right. and stuff like that, have, have a, a cold frame clinic or a composting yeah. building yeah. clinic. So, um, well, so. Roger's leaving. We're going to lose our quorum. So why don't we go ahead and and um, 
disband, but before that, I will just give you a quick kind of overview so you guys can chew on this um, as between now and the next meeting, because we'll, we'll postpone the conference education until uh, next time. But so w we discussed in the past that we've been, um, you know, we're all about waste reduction and reuse, but also recycling and other things. And so I wanted to, you know, we're an advisory body and educating the public is something that is important to do. And, and we've focused a lot on reuse and we're focusing on repair. And I guess I would like to harness some of the energy of the group to focus more on um, reduction and, and uh, part of that reduction is composting. That, that's kind of one area that we could have a lot of influence educating the people of Northampton about. And my vision is that we could have some kind of a mobile education center um, in addition to, to having workshops potentially we could have some kind of a, a mobile education center about composting opportunities in Northampton that we could have out at the recenter during the season and then have at our events potentially, our pop-up events. And there are essentially three ways that you can, we're really lucky in Northampton because we have three ways that people can compost. We have home composting and we provide very cost-effective methods for people to do that. People can bring stuff to the transfer station with their transfer station sticker free of charge. And we also have two haulers now that will pick up compost curbside. So people need to know about this. And, and my thought was to have some kind of a, a kiosk or something that with, with a sample of a home composter and information about what happens at the transfer station if you want to bring it here and with the, the contact information of the um, the haulers that do that. So I just wanted to throw that out. There are lots of other things that we can do also for compost education. Um, and it's an exciting kind of thing and I, I'm hopeful that the, the group will um, will help with some brain energy and yeah, cool. towards this. Our next meeting, uh, let me just quick peek to see what my new business was. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna put you on that. I'm going to be on vacation uh, from August 18th to <laughs> the 20 something. So I will not. I will be here for the our August meeting, okay. but I'll be out after that. And uh, the strawberry festival we can talk about next time. And, and I'm or gone next, next week, but if we want to get a repair committee. Okay, I, I'll, I'll, I'll send after. a doodle out today. Okay. And our next meeting is August 17th. Mm -hmm. Okay. And any any other quick news that anybody has? Great. Thank you, everybody.